yeah, we are getting students in now. And good morning, good evening, or good afternoon. So welcome to Wilfred Laurie's open house. So this is the international session. Um, so I guess we may have some uh, uh, students uh, who are right now in other countries. So would you mind to uh, let us know where you are? So the three of us now uh, are in Canada, in Ontario, Canada. So uh, uh, no, one of uh, Renisha actually is in Vancouver. So and uh, actually we are we are in the different cities uh, across Canada. So I would like to know uh, where you are now oh, in Toronto. Wow, we have another um, student in uh, uh, oh Toronto and India. Okay. So uh, yeah, for you guys, that probably will be night or evening and uh, or afternoon. Well, we also have one student from US. Well, that's nice. That's so nice. So and yeah, now I uh, I don't see any more uh, new students pop up uh, to our meeting room. So probably we just start our open house. So how's everyone doing? Well, that's nice. Yeah, we got we got students like from uh, from multiple uh, background. So that's really nice. It's the same as our uh, the same as the, the panelists as, as our host as well. Uh, so uh, just a brief introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Lydia Wang. I am the uh, regional manager on uh, international recruitment and the partnership team at Wilfrid Laurier. So welcome uh, every students again to our virtual open house. So our open house actually has uh, started since last weekend and it will end at uh, next weekend. So the open house is not just a one day event. Actually, uh, there are uh, different sessions uh, every day uh, during the uh, like with various topics uh, for you to learn about the university. And for example, we have a program introduction session and a student, uh, student service introduction session. And uh, also uh, we also have admission Q&A session. Um, so you are welcome to register uh, the sessions that you are interested in. Um, so we will uh, record uh, every sessions. Also, we have recorded all the sessions previously, and you could check out our YouTube channel uh, to watch the replays. And uh, I hope uh, our open house will help you make the right decision on your academic choice. Um, so this morning and this session will be about one hour long, and uh, we will talk about the topics relevant to international students. Uh, so for this one hour session, we also have two uh, students with us and to share their own experience about Laurie and to share their own life uh, in Canada. So they are Yelene and Renisa. Um, so would you mind uh, introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah. Um, hello everyone, my name is Elaine. Currently, I'm a third year business student with minor in economics. Would like to concentrate in accounting. Uh, I'm an international student from China and I came to Canada when I was grade 10. If you have any questions regarding um, business programs in Laurier, what are some difficulties I met in Canada as an international student? How did I solve those problems? And anything you want to know, feel free to ask in our Q&A session in the end. I'm so willing to help. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Renisa, and I'm a fourth year film study student with the Vancouver Film School Pathway. So I'm an international student from India. However, I grew up in Dubai. So I'm here now and I'm currently in Vancouver. It's like 5.30 a.m. over here. So that's where you can see it's a little dark, but I would love to answer any questions about an arts program, about a Vancouver Film School, and definitely interested to see what you guys have. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, girls. Uh, actually, I am an immigrant as well, and uh, I came from China, and uh, I uh, just moved to Canada three years ago, so I'm quite new as well. And uh, yeah, I also would like to share my own uh, experience and uh, uh, of my uh, resettlement in Canada as well. 
So uh, let's 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 just get start of our uh, open house. So uh, here are the highlights that what we will cover for today's agenda. So you are welcome to type your questions in the chat box or in the Q and A session um, during uh, during uh, we are talking. Uh, so we will answer your questions at the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, so uh, Laurie is about 110 years old and currently we have more than 20,000 full-time students and we have over uh, 80 undergraduate programs. So where is Laurie? Uh, actually, we have two campuses uh, with different academic focus. Uh, so students don't need to travel between two campuses. Uh, because once you decide your program, your campus will be fixed. So you will stay uh, on that campus for all your studies, but you are welcome to travel to other campus uh, for sure, to meet friends or uh, to, uh, to engage in some activities. Uh, so uh, one campus is in the city of Waterloo and the other one is located in the Brantford. I think the location is really perfect for, uh, especially for high school graduates, because it's away uh, from lots of distractions in the big city. However, it's just a one hour or one and a half hour from Toronto. Um, that is the largest uh, uh, city in Canada. So it's very easy for you to explore the metropolitan city and build up your uh, career connections in the big city as well. Uh, and uh, um, the most important thing, I think, the cost of living is much less than the big cities. Um, just imagine you will uh, study and live in the in the in the uh, in the city for four years. So if you stay in the uh, relatively smaller city, then yeah, you will receive a lot of money. And for this money, yeah, you can spend in travel or you can spend in uh, any other other things and to make your life more wonderful. I mean, and the city of Brantford actually uh, is uh, it's smaller than Waterloo, but it's closer to Toronto. It's just a one hour drive and it's easy to drive to Toronto because there's only one highway and uh, linked uh, Brentford and Toronto. And the Brentford uh, campus actually is quite unique. It's transformed from the city uh, downtown, the city town center into the thriving uh, student community. And our uh, language program LEAF um, is located uh, on this campus. And the Waterloo campus is very friendly to our students. And uh, because in Waterloo, out, one out of three uh, people uh, in this city is always students. So our Waterloo campus has about 20,000 students. And it's also our oldest campus. So I know uh, Yelin and Renisa have been uh, studying at Waterloo campus for uh, a few years, for a couple of years. So may I ask you to share your in, uh, impression about this city and about our campus? Yeah. Yeah, so okay. uh, for me, my first impression when I came to Waterloo, it was a different setting for me because I came from a city. And even though Waterloo is a city, it was a lot more like enjoying nature for me, at least coming from Dubai. And I really liked it because it was silent. It was kind of, you know, detoxing in a way. And when I went, came to campus, honestly, and I'm not... Uh, just saying this because I'm an ambassador, but everyone was really friendly. I had no idea where I had to go. And everyone was like, do you need help? Can we help you? And they would just like lead me where I needed to go. Uh, there's one tip if you ever was at campus, I would say is don't step on the golden hawk. I'm sure if you meet any <laughs> ambassador, they will tell you like, be like, don't step on the golden hawk. And that's just a tradition here at Laurier. We respect the golden hawk. If you, if you do step on it, you kiss it. But overall, Waterloo in general is a nice, quiet place that is a, away from the city. Um, there's still a lot to do. Like if you go uh, out, there are nice restaurants around. On campus, there's a lot of like places you can go to eat. Uh, yeah, and I would like Elaine to share some of her thoughts as well. Thank you. 
Yeah, so for me, um, because I used to live in Toronto before when I was high school, so when I first came to Laurie, uh, when I came to uh, Aunt Waterloo, I feel like it's small town and really quiet, as Renisa has mentioned. And the campus is not really big. You can walk to different classes in like 10 to 15 minutes. It's really convenient. Even though Waterloo is really small, but it is very convenient place. You can go to a, a lot of supermarkets, also have shopping malls, like anything available in here. Yeah, thank you for sharing your uh, experience. And uh, I know like the our campus, uh, yes, for sure, like even as an employee, I can feel like um, it's, it's very friendly and welcoming, uh, like feeling in, in the in the uh, on the campus. So uh, that's why I really enjoy my uh, working experience at Laurier as well. And then let's continue to our uh, topics uh, for programs. So as I mentioned before, uh, that we have 80 um, undergraduate programs. So at Laurier, you can also customize your uh, program, your degree. Uh, besides these 80 majors, we also have a lot of concentrations, elective courses and minors. You can choose to broaden your knowledge. Um, so I, I would like to mention a couple of the programs uh, that are popular among our uh, international students. Um, so the first one, uh, I would like to go for BBA program. So there are actually 10 different concentrations and the BBA. So the BBA is, uh, is the uh, business administration, is our uh, business bachelor program. So it's not just a, a general business program. It's like there are still uh, different concentration, different streams. For example, you can choose accounting or uh, finance, or uh, you can choose human resources or international uh, management um, under the BBA program. Uh, so also you can choose two or, or one or two concentrations in your senior year. Um, so our BBA is really a top business program in Canada because we are one of the first universities that are uh, accredited by the AACSB. Um, so which means we are top 5% uh, uh, business school in the world. So with, with, with the BBA program, we also offer four double degrees. Two of them are our BBA with our uh, computer science and uh, financial mathematics. And the other two double degrees are, with, are our BBA with University of Waterloo's uh, mathematics and computer science. So for the double degrees, uh, you will be able to finish two majors and get two degree credentials within five years. And uh, because the double degree also uh, has uh, also have uh, co-op programs within it. So within the five years, you will also uh, be able to accumulate 12 to six months as co-op, uh, like working experience. And the other one I would like to mention is about our science program, especially the computer science, uh, because it's getting so popular here in Canada. And uh, uh, our data science uh, is actually the first bachelor degree of this kind across Canada. So like for this program is really well known by our employers. And we also have music performance program if you are interested in, uh, in, in performing. And uh, we have like all kinds of uh, instruments. Also we have vocal and under our uh, music performance programs. And our uh, Bachelor of Music Therapy is only, uh, only this kind in, uh, in Ontario. And uh, if you are interested in design and uh, uh, you have creative thinking uh, ability, so I would recommend you to take the user experience design program because for a uh, user experience designer is really in demand in the job market in Canada now. Uh, so due to the limited time, I can't cover all the programs and on our website, uh, we just updated the program page, so you can easily check out the detailed information about each program there. Uh, if you are still not, uh, not satisfied with, with all the information, or you have additional questions on your interested program, uh, you are welcome to register the uh, program sessions at uh, Open House and communicate your uh, questions with, with, with our uh, faculty staff directly. 
So I know choosing the program may be the hardest decision to make for your uh, undergraduate studies. So let's just uh, check, uh, ask um, Elian and Renisa if they have suggestions on how to choose a program and share uh, their experience in their uh, program studies. So who will go first? I can go first. Okay. Uh, so for me to actually choose my program, which is film studies, I happen to actually be looking for a practical experience, for like a program that could give me a practical experience as well as something that I could learn. And Laurier, interestingly, had the option for me to do film studies at Laurier for uh, three years and then one year at Vancouver Film School, which would give me like the practical experience. So I did my first two years of theory and learning film studies and the history and analyzing and doing all like the very theorized stuff, you know. Uh, and then my third year, I came here to Vancouver and I learned how to use the cameras, how to do lighting, production design, the graphics and everything. And that was one of my main reasons how to, like when I chose my uh, program and my degree, it's something that I, like it fit what I wanted. I wanted uh, two things and I was able to get that at Laurier. And furthermore, with an arts degree and going to program advisor, they, I was given multiple options to see, okay, if, I didn't want to go to Vancouver Film School. What were the other art programs I could take that would fit my interest? You know, even if it was like a small hobby, um, I would always go and see. Okay, maybe if I take in this class in elective, maybe I can take it as a minor. Uh, that's how I sort of uh, figured out what I wanted with my program and with my degree. Um, and yeah, I would let Aline talk a bit more because she has taken minors as well. Yeah, uh, so I always want to learn business when I was very small and I also like to do uh, like group work, uh, case competition and anything like that. Uh, I know Laurie has uh, many case competitions every year and that's why I choose Laurie and it also has really good uh, experiential learning opportunities in here. Um, and then I feel like after I came to Lori, um, 80% of my uh, assignments are group work. That's what I expected. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really like Lori. Okay, thanks, thanks both of you uh, for your uh, for uh, for your sharing. So actually, I have one uh, student ask like uh, like the student apply for BBA. So like where to find which minors that the student can 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 pick. So probably this question can be uh, Yilin. So like for BBA students, so uh, what are the minors that the student can choose? Um, um, you can took my uh, you big uh for where minors, can they find this information? Yeah. Um, for minors, you can choose whatever minors you want because uh, you only take only have to take like uh, six to seven classes, uh, to complete your minor degree. Uh, so if you want to minor, you can uh, search the web uh, search in the Google. Um, what uh, like. If you wanna minor economics, you search economic minor in Laurier, then the website will show you uh, what are some courses you need to take. And that's the information. Okay, thank you. So I just share uh, the BBA uh, link, uh, program link in the chat box. So if you click the link, you can also see uh, what are the uh, minors that is available for this BBA program. So here's uh, one student ask like if this open house is for undergraduate students. Yes, uh, this open house actually uh, emphasize on the uh, undergraduate uh, studies, uh, but for like for the co-op and uh, students service, all of this kind will, uh, will be uh, available to uh, graduate studies as well, but we mainly talk about the undergraduate program uh, during our open house. So, yeah. Uh, so let's, I think, let's just continue and uh, uh, I, I see there are some questions, so uh, we just continue and then we will answer your questions uh, by the end of the uh, presentation. 
Uh, so at, at Laurier, actually, you learn knowledge, uh, not only in the classroom, as Yilin said, but also from the real world. And we also offer uh, different types of experiential learning opportunities from volunteer academic research uh, to the paid internship. And you will gain the knowledge and develop your uh, valuable skills to solve the real world problem. And we also have a, uh, a career center uh, that to offer students comprehensive career service, uh, including uh, writing the resume cover letter or and uh, building up your uh, LinkedIn account and, uh, and organizing uh, different of the uh, campus job fairs. Uh, I think that's why our employment rate for international students is very high. So in 2020, last year, um, 90, close to 94 percentage uh, international graduates uh, got hired or went to postgraduate studies uh, right after their graduation. Um, so there are also many job opportunities available on campus for our students. Um, and I would like to invite Yilin and Renisa and uh, to talk about what kind of jobs uh, that the Laureate students can find on campus. Yeah, um, there are many jobs available, uh, part-time job available in campus, like in um, an athletic complex, you can work as a trainer and also like lifeguard or in the food service um, restaurants in, on campus, you can also work as a staff. And then Renisa and I work as a campus ambassador and we, that's what uh, our, our, what we are doing now. So we introduce uh, our campus to all students who want to know our campus more. Um, I think there are many opportunities on campus. Do you wanna add something, Renisa? Yeah, so like Elaine said, we work as ambassadors over here. However, there are plenty of opportunities if you wanna work let's say an athletic center, which is actually one of the biggest hiring uh, places at Laurier. A lot of students work over there. And quite often when you are on campus, the ma main people you see at the restaurants on campus or the cafes are students. And it's actually a really fun experience, especially when you're, when at least for me, when I was running late to class, it would be great to see my friends face first thing in the morning, giving me coffee. I'm like, Thank God, I can go to class now. So it's really run by students and students are at the forefront and plenty of opportunities. There is also, if you're interested in uh, journal journalism, you can go and be part of our magazines. Some of them have hiring positions. So that's an interesting opportunity. Uh, and yeah, we also have uh, students working during summer terms, uh, just as this part of the co-op at Laurier. So plenty of work experiences over here. Okay, thanks for sharing your experience. And just saw one student uh, asked about the co-op. Actually, this is the next thing that I would like to talk about uh, because uh, co-op is, it, it, it's a co-op program that makes Laurier very, very popular uh, for, uh, for, for high school graduates. So co-op means paid internship and uh, we have 80 programs and 50, uh, more than 50 of them uh, offer, uh, offer co-op co-op uh, terms to our students. And for some programs, the co-op is mandatory. And for some programs that the co-op uh, is optional. So all this information are listed on, our, on the uh, program page. So once you uh, click the co-op, uh, click the uh, uh, program page, uh, you will see there is a co-op uh, item. So you, 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 will, you will be able to see if the co-op for this program is mandatory or optional. And because we are uh, we are very close to GTA, we are very close to the Toronto area. So the majority of our program of our co-op jobs are uh, in the GTA area. And um, so we also work with many employers across Ontario to offer our uh, students uh, co-op job opportunities. So I know Renisa um, has participated in the co-op term. So would you like to share about your experience about co-op? Uh, about a co-op? Yes, so I participated in one co-op term and uh, 
For me, my experience was really lovely, actually. Uh, we start off by sending an application at the end of your first year or right uh, at the start of your second year. And when you get called in for an interview, that's your first round. So your second round is an interview. And the interview is really nice. It's the one tip I would say if you're going in for a co-op interview is really learn how to pitch yourself because they will have your resume, but you have to be um, able to talk about yourself and how uh, you want to work and how you will represent Laurier as a co-op student. Uh, everyone's super nice, everyone's super accommodating, and even every step of the way after that interview, the whole process, we had an advisor with us. Each one were assigned an advisor, and we would sit through our resumes, they would go through workshops with us. We, uh, Once you're in the co-op program, there are modules you have to complete, so there is one for your resume, one for your cover letter, uh, one for your interviews, and it's just a whole step-by-step -step process to uh, get to where you need to go and prepare you enough for an actual interview. And we also have mock interviews at the co-op center. We have plenty of workshops, writing workshops, um, learning how to pitch yourself workshops, and they host events yearly and throughout the term. So that's a bit about my experience. And when I went forward with the co-op program and got a job out of it, the co-op office was always there. Whatever questions I had in terms of work permit, they helped me. The international office helped me with the whole process. So I never really felt like I was alone. Uh, there was always uh, individuals and someone there to help me. Uh, no, and like it can be tricky, especially as an international student learning and navigating a work term here in Canada. And with the co-op program, it made a lot easier for me to um, understand Stand most of the technical jargons <laughs> that were there but yeah more or less that was my experience yeah uh thank you uh renisa so as as uh, as she said i think uh, the students always can benefit from uh co-op programs uh because co-op program, programs not only help the students obtain the uh like the real work experience relevant to your program uh, but also but also help you make a deeper understanding of your academic courses. And with the co-op, you could easily expand your network uh, of both professional and uh, uh, personal contacts and gain some uh, professional Canadian experience before your graduation. And uh, yeah, it can make you, uh, it, it can give you uh, success for your future uh, career as well. So at Laurier, you saw how co-op works. So actually co-op terms are integrated into the academic uh, terms. So therefore at Laurier, uh, you will be still able to finish your bachelor degree in, within the four years uh, because all the co-op terms is uh, integrated in the four years. Uh, but for some program like user experience design, the co-op will be an additional year. So that might be uh, five years, but I think only about 10% of the program offer co-op like that. So it's better for you to check uh, the school website and to check the program website to get uh, the program uh, in, uh, the, to get the uh, co-op information. So let's just uh, uh, say something yeah, about international. So how uh, can international students work in Canada? Uh, the answer is yes, but there are still some restrictions. Uh, so for international students, you uh, you can work during your post-secondary studies, and uh, you are also eligible for three-year work permit after graduating from our bachelor degree, and uh, you may check all the information and the restrictions on the IRCC website. It lists very, very clear uh, information, and once you become a uh, laureate students and our student, uh, our, stu uh, our international student advisors, um, will help you out with all your work permit, study permit, uh, all kinds of these questions. So how to apply? Uh, I see that there is a uh, there's question about application pop up and then yeah now let's uh, talk about the application process. So our application go uh, through the Ontario University Application Center, um, like which we usually call the OUAC WAC. Uh, once you submitted all your application and please be attention to your inbox, uh, we will send you our Laurie uh, application 
application portal. So within this portal, you can check your application status and upload your documents. And for undergraduate programs, it usually takes four to six weeks uh, for your application uh, to be processed if your application is completed. So if there is any missing documents or if there is missing uh, information with your application, it will delay the application process. So it may take longer. So just uh, keep your eyes uh, in your inbox and keep your eyes on the uh, message notification in your application portal and try to make sure that you submit all uh, the required documents and information as early as possible. And before uh, submitting your application, it's better for you to check the admission uh, requirement, uh, make sure that you have met the minimum courses uh, requirements and the GPA requirements. Uh, for each program as well. So on our website, you will see uh, what we call the general requirements. So it just lists some uh, general uh, number of courses information and the minimal requirements for these courses. And on each program page, it lists the uh, program specific information. So just to take this program as an example. So this program is for BBA. So you will see uh, the minimal admission uh, range is quite high, is about 80s. And the competitive admission range based on the last year is low <clears throat> 90s, which means if you have like, um, like 30, 31, uh, if you have 81 or 82, yeah, probably you won't be eligible for our BBA program. But you can choose other program. And for example, economics, that might be uh, a little bit lower than the BBA programs. And also there are, we have some programs that will require uh, like 80s or 75. And this, all, uh, this information are all listed on the school website. So you can check on the admission page. And if you, uh, if your high school is a Canadian a curriculum outside of Toronto, outside of Ontario, so there is a link to check all, uh, all the other Canadian curriculums. And also it has the, uh, like the course, uh, course title and uh, the course GPA um, listed on the website. Um, if you are an international uh, curriculum student, for example, AB, IP, or A level, and all this information are on the web, uh, website as well. So if you click the uh, drop down menu, drop down box, and you will see all, uh, you will see the GPA, minimum GPA requirements on the website. And if you are studying in the, in the local uh, high school uh, courses, which is totally fine. And uh, we also have all this information available on website. Um, and you can just find where you are from or where your high school is located. For example, if your high school is in Hong Kong or if in Pakistan, so you just click the country's name and you will see uh, the, uh, the cutoff score and uh, not, not really the cutoff score, like the minimal requirements and the uh, course requirement. So it's, it's really, it's, it's everything is on the website like for the admission requirements. And, uh, <clears throat> and for international applicants, uh, we require you provide us the English proficiency. Uh, but if you study in the high school for three years and the high school's uh, instruction language is English and you have really good uh, grade 12 English, they may waive your English proficiency. Uh, the decision will be made by the admission officer. So if not, and uh, if you study like less than three years, or if your high school's instruction uh, language is not English, you need to provide us a passing uh, English testing score, such as ELSE, TOEFL, or Duolingo, or, or KALE. So if you don't have a passing uh, testing score, um, we have a language pathway for you, uh, which is our LEAF program. Um, so uh, after com uh, completing the LEAF program, you don't need to take any other language test before enrolling into your, uh, into your uh, academic program. Um, so Elin, would you mind to share the LEAF uh, program webpage in the chat box? Thank you.
So uh, we also offer an academic pathway, which is WLIC, uh, our international college. Um, this is for uh, just the applicants whose GPA uh, doesn't meet our admission requirements. You can come to our international college for year one after completing the year one courses and have a passing score. Then you can uh, you can come to Laurie for the year two. So all the information on the website as well. Uh, so I think Yilin uh, has mentioned to me before about the importance of English preparation as a non-English speaker. So would you like to share your insights about our LEAF program? Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, no worry. I can share the link uh -huh. in the chat box. Yeah, I'm yeah. sharing. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I have a friend, he took a LEAF um, program before. So there are three courses you would take in LEAF programs. There are introduction of Niagara 4, listening and speaking, writing and reading. So in the listening and speaking class, the professor will play videos and give you handouts to figure a uh, fear in the answers. And professor will first give the topic regarding recent news and then split the class into different groups with four to five students. Uh, they will first uh, discuss with each other in the group regarding uh, what this news is talking about and what we learn from it. And then the professor will come to talk on each group regarding what they learn from it to make sure students understand the material better. And then in the writing and reading class, the professor will give students a book that has many articles. Then each article um, have um, questions. Every class they will read articles and the professor also give um, students the chance to read the book together. Um, then they will do the questions. Um, the question can be multiple choice, fill in the blank or write an essay. So if it's write an essay, then after you finish your essay, the professor will give you um, the grades with feedback in your essay to make sure you are better in the writing and then to avoid the mistake you had in the last time. Then the Niagara Fall, this is the introduction to the fall in Mississauga. And then during the class, the professor will teach you um, uh, the history of the fall and then where it's located, how it become today's appearances, how it distribute um, to Canada and the United States and things like that. So from this class, um, my friends say he really like know what university courses be like before they go to university. University, so um, he will not feel like so panic about university courses after taking this class. Overall, the program um is very helpful and necessary for those students whose language is uh who, whose first language is not English, uh, especially if you didn't take high school in Canada or any like. English speaking country, they can um, improve your English for sure, but also um, like in a way of uh, helping students to have a better transition into different cultures and an intense university life. Yeah, uh, thank you, Yulin, for sharing. So I actually, I just uh, uh, got a question from one student, like uh, like if, if you have all the required documents and uh, if you are eligible for early application. Um, so I would suggest you that to submit all the information that you have and uh, and think our, uh, our uh, application officer process the application of, on first come, first serve. Um, so if you, if you're uh, if your application is completed and then yeah you will be given the um, admission decision um, as early as possible and for the english proficiency so if you are uh, because you are living in uh, singapore and uh, uh, yeah and the uh, and your uh, high school instruction uh, is in english uh, you are likely to be waived for the english uh, proficiency requirements uh, however the decision will be made by the uh, admission officer because it depends on like how many years you really zero, three years and also uh, your gpa your score of your uh, 12 english 
Um, so you just submit all the uh, information. So if 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 uh, if they will waive your uh, English requirements, then they will give you a direct entry uh, uh, offer. So if the admission officer uh, thinks that uh, you need uh, to to pro to show us your English proficiency, and you will receive a, a conditional uh, uh, letter of admission. So for the condition is the English. So you need to provide like the scores, or you need to attend our leave, and uh, and there will be a deadline for you to submit all the language requirements. But technically, as in my eyes, you meet the minimal uh, requirements, but all the final decision will be made by our admission officer. Yeah. So. OK. And the other thing I would like to point out is uh, for the LEAF program is not actually just about the language. Uh, as Elin said, it also help the students uh, prepare for the academic success. And based on our uh, data, LEAF students usually have higher GPA than the non-LEAF uh, students. So let's talk about our students' experience. So this is quite an exciting part. So what the campus life, uh, what the campus life look like at Laurier. So Canada is really a uh, multicultural country and actually Laurier's campus is the same. And our international uh, students population is just 7%. And, uh, but we have students from uh, 90 different countries and regions around the world. Uh, so at Laurier, you will experience different cultural and people from all over the world in Canada. And uh, we are actually a medium sized uh, school. So our student to faculty ratio is about 25 to one. Um, therefore at Laurier, every student will get attention from your professor. So it's easier, very easy for individual students to get support from their professors and, and from the university staff. Uh, Laurier actually is a very uh, supportive community. So there are programs that help you with your uh, studies, with your financial uh, questions and uh, mental needs. And our international center offers uh, exclusive service to our international students. Um, so I'm wondering if Yilian and Renisa as an international student, so how do you feel uh, the support from the university? As an international student for yeah. me, I honestly felt very supported. So as uh, when you're an international student here, you have an orientation week like uh, all the other students over here. You have it a few days earlier than the actual orientation. And during that time, we had a lot of information sessions that helped me. Like, and they were not only about campus life, they were very much about, you know, how you're gonna live your life outside of campus, uh, about grocery stores, about tips and tricks you could learn. And that was very helpful, especially with the ongoing pandemic. I had a lot of support from the international office where they would reach out to me through emails because I was stuck here in Canada and I couldn't go back home. So they would always check and they would see if we were doing well. And sometimes they would host Zoom sessions to make sure we felt included and supported. So my experience, I've always been supported by the international office. It's, they've always opened us with like open arms. Even when I go there and I haven't been there in six months, they're like, oh, hi. And I'm like, you remember me? Oh my, but like, it's, it's really fun. It's a huge big family here. Uh, the international student community is also pretty big. So you feel welcome. You don't feel outside, uh, like out of place. Uh, Elaine, if you have anything you wanna add. Yeah, so um, what I usually get support is from a writing center. When I was in my first year, I always went to writing center to improve my reports or any essays. Um, the point, uh, the appointments is usually uh, from 15 to 30 minutes and they will not like do editing directly on your reports, but to do it together. So they will point out on your mistakes and ask you what, you think it can be improved and then they will tell you the answer I think that's really cool experiences I have because you really learn English from it and then I also for like career center I always send my resume and the cover letter to them so I can get improved um, 
there are two ways to get the support. And then the first is to make like same day uh, 15 minutes appointment for resume editing. And then the other way is more convenient. I usually use it is I send my resume cover letter and a job description from, uh, through email. And then they will give you feedback with um, where you can improve. Mm, I use this service to find part-time job in school. And then we, Laurie also has a kind of a mission that is um, once a golden hawk, always a golden hawk. If you have graduated from Laurie or have worked for a long time, you can always come back to, um, they'll always help you to do um, resume editing. Um, they will always like help you to um, build your career. I think that's really helpful resource you can get from uh, Laurie. Well, uh, that sounds great. So yeah, thanks for sharing. So actually our international center, I mean, on top of the student support, our international center also organized the uh, orientation for international students uh, for, every, uh, for each intake. And uh, and uh, and there are so many like cultural events and uh, held by uh, the our international center uh, that you can participate. Uh, also, uh, you are welcome to um, try uh, co uh, contribute uh, to this cultural events and uh, with, with your cultural background um, to let more people uh, get familiar with your uh, cultural uniqueness. And uh, in addition to these uh, student services and the International Center also offers the students exchange program uh, that will allow you to uh, study abroad for a term or for a full time year at one of our 70 exchange um, partner institutions across the world. So it's really a great opportunity to build your uh, intercultural skills and knowledge experience some new uh, social and cultural environment and uh, create uh, the lasting uh, friendship. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, for uh, for the exchange program, you only need to pay laureate's tuition. And we also <clears throat> support every student for each step uh, during the whole uh, exchange uh, process. Uh, so I'm not sure if if any student are uh, if any students is a big fan of support. So Laurie at Laurie we have 550 varsity athletics, and on our 22 uh, varsity teams, including like basketball, basketball, uh, curling, football, uh, soccer, hockey, uh, swimming, and we also have the uh, state of the art uh, athletic facilities where you could access with your uh, student card without any additional cost. And if you are not interested in becoming uh, such a uh, professional uh, athlete, but you would like to play with your hobbies, and uh, yeah, at Laurie, you could also try our intramural and uh, sports club, and you can register for that with a group of your friends and make a sports team. Yeah, there's always a lot of fun on campus. Uh, so <clears throat> I have to mention about the residence. So we have residents on both campus and uh, we guarantee the residence to all new graduate students. However, you need to submit your application before the deadline. Um, so actually uh, for myself, I really encourage new students uh, to stay in the residence because it is safe and, uh, and easy. And uh, we have living and upper year students in the residence will help you with all your questions and uh, with your uh, transition to uh, Laurie community and Canada. So Yelia and uh, uh, Renisa, so have you ever been stayed in the residence or do you have any experience for residence? Would you like to share? I don't have, uh, because I live in off campus, so maybe Renisa can talk about residence. Yeah, yeah so I did live in residence, and I actually lived in an RLC. Wow. An RLC is basically a residence learning community, and the, only, the difference is, in an RLC, you have a different types of RLC. So I was in the media and uh, film RLC, but there's one for business, there's one for entrepreneurship, there's one for history. 
Uh, there's one for music. There's a lot you can choose. And basically in an RLC, it, it's uh, like-minded individuals who have an interest, say for mine, which was media and film, we would come together and live on the same floor. And our supervisor on the floor, so our Don would have like activities every month, maybe like one of the activities we had was to make a film in 24 hours. Uh, I know the business RLC had some of the professors come in to revise exam materials and answer any questions or doubts they had. And the history RLC, they planned a trip overseas. So there's a lot of activities and it's a kind of to get to know people who have the same interest as you. I met a lot of my classmates through my RLC and I was able to, uh, I still am friends with them. We go to class together. They've come to Vancouver with me. So that was an amazing opportunity. Aside from being in an RLC, there's a lot of other residence opportunities you can be. You can be part of house council. And that's another way uh, to get involved in school. And it's also great on your resume when you're applying for co-op. So that, that's one tip. Um, yeah, so that, and in living in residence, they always try to make you feel uh, welcomed. So there's a lot of like activities they do. They have um, Hawk Night, which is a game night. And like you do obstacle courses and you compete with other residents. And it's a friendly competitive spirit we have here at Laurier. Um, yeah, that's a little bit about my experience living in residence. I Being in an RLC, I lived in a single dorm. Uh, so that means I, I had my own private room and I shared a washroom with another person. However, we had a shared room, which is, I would say, the typical movie uh, type of uh, college dorm room uh, that you would say, uh, two beds and you share it with another person. Um, yeah, and that's a little bit. Residence life is you can choose what type of residence you want to go into. So if you prefer a more quiet living, there is an option that way you can choose a quiet uh, residence life. If you want to go into a co-ed residence, you can choose that. Or you want to go for a single gender residence, you can do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks for sharing. So there's uh, one student asking, so do we require uh, the students to live in school dormitory? Uh, actually, it's not required, not mandatory. So uh, it's, it's your freedom to choose, it's your right to choose, uh, live on campus or live outside of campus. Uh, but like for new uh, students, live, uh, living campus probably will be like much easier, but you have to apply before the due date. Uh, because like before the, only before the due date, the, the residents can be guaranteed for new students. Yeah, just as Renisa said, and uh, we have like different types of rooms and you, uh, you can indicate your preference in the application form, um, but we can't guarantee that you will get the type of the room because it's all based on the availability. And uh, so for uh, for our residents, there there's meal plan. There's meal plan for both uh, for both campuses, and then you can choose like different types of the meal plan. So uh, like uh, this is our last part, and after uh, the scholarship and the finances, and we will answer all your questions. So I can see like we keep receiving lots of questions, which is really good, and. Uh, and for the tuition, so our pure tuition is about 30 to 35 uh, Canadian, a thousand Canadian dollars per year. And plus, if plus the living expenses and the students' expenses, so uh, like uh, for, for the academic year, it will be 45 to about 60,000 Canadian dollars per academic year. Uh, so it's, it's always a range because our tuition uh, is not like fixed for every semester. It's all depends on how many courses, how many credits you are going to choose. So it's, it's always be a range for the tuition. Uh, uh, however, that tuition is actually for a single pro program. Uh, we actually have uh, several double degree. For the double degree, the tuition will be a little bit higher because you have to pay for two schools or you have to pay for two programs. Um, and so, that, so that's why the tuition will be a little bit higher. So on, on our uh, tuition uh, page and you will see all the breakdowns for, for the tuition. 
Uh, so the scholarship, uh, quite excited part. And uh, so uh, we offer, we do offer student scholarships and we also uh, offer the uh, international students entrance scholarship, uh, but uh, that scholarship is not guaranteed for every student. But the good thing is for the entrance scholarship, you don't need to submit any additional application. So if you are eligible, so we will grant you the scholarship automatically. So you don't need to consider and if you miss any deadline for scholarship as an, uh, as an applicant, you don't, you don't need to worry about that. And uh, our scholarship usually ranges from 500 to 5,000. It depends on uh, your GPA, also depends on which program you are applying. Uh, for example, our BBA is, is always the most competitive program. Uh, if you want to get a scholarship, probably you have your GPA have to be uh, 90 or even higher than 95. So it's really depend on the year, on, on that year of the uh, ap application. So also we uh, like once you are uh, enrolled uh, in Laurier, uh, we, we will have a portal for all the students to apply for the scholarship and the bursaries. So if you are eligible and then you will be, uh, you will be grant uh, the uh, scholarship after you submit your application. And uh, so just keep in mind, uh, most of the scholarship will be only given to the students with quite competitive with quite good GPA score at Laurier. So it's, it's, uh, uh, so it's important to keep good uh, standing uh, in your uh, academic uh, courses at Laurier to get the uh, scholarship. Um, however, the scholarship can't cover your tuition. And uh, because we are a public funded school, so we can't do like uh, to uh, just cover one year or like uh, one semester tuition for our scholarship. We, we can do that because we are public funded. Uh, so it, it's still better for you uh, to prepare your tuition and living expenses uh, for this application and, uh, and uh, uh, as part of the planning uh, for your undergraduate uh, studies. Yeah, but for sure you can get some scholarship and also if you attend the co-op program, um, you will get the salaries, you will get paid. Yeah, as some like the subsidies of your living expenses. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's, almost, uh, it's almost all that what we would like to share for our presentation. And you are welcome to uh, reach us out and uh, contact us. And uh, now we, uh, we just switch to answer the students' questions. Uh, so let's start from the Q&A box. Uh, I see that one student is asking for transfer, uh, uh, is asking for uh, the, the, uh, uh, to transfer to Laurier from other uh, university. Uh, yes, we do accept uh, the transfer uh, applica applications. So in the, in the OUAC application, you just, uh, uh, put all your uh, uh, undergraduate uh, study experience in the, uh, in, the, in the application, then you will be automatically considered a transfer student to Laurier. Uh, so there are some um, credits that you can bring to Laurier. It depends on the program that you apply. If, if, if the courses are match, then yeah, we will give you the you the credits, and then you 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 can, you may bring some credits to Laurier and and towards your uh bachelor degrees. So that is the process. I think I shared you the link for the. Uh, I share you the link for the transfer students. And here's another student asking for if, uh, if May intake is available. Uh, yes, uh, but technically uh, all of our program will only have September intake, but we do open uh, January and May intake for some of the programs. And for the program list, uh, you need to go to the OUAC application portal. And uh, once you log in there and you will see which program are available for May intake. Not all the program, but I think there are around 20 programs uh, are open for May intake. So you can check that out. And, uh, and what is the difference between the biology program and the 
uh, my medicine and and the biology and the science and, and the technology. Yeah, I think uh, the difference will be the different, uh, like the, the, the concentration and some courses will be different. So if the biology is and the medicine, uh, for sure it will have more uh, courses or research opportunities related in the medicine or uh, medication, or if biology, if under the science and the technology, so it will be, uh, it will be different courses than the other concentrations. Yeah. I'm a Nigerian. Do, uh, do you take an ECO result in, in your institution? So I would suggest you to check out the uh, international uh, admission requirements page uh, because I can't actually, I can't remember uh, like the uh, admission requirements for each country, but I would suggest you to check that out on that page. So Yilin, would you mind to send the students our international uh, requirement yes, by, yeah. by page? Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, I would like to know the uh, admission uh, application requirements for you as students. So I'm not sure which courses you are taking. So like for AP courses, and uh, Yilin, would you like to share the uh, international admission requirements for, for that student who is asking uh, the uh, application requirements for you as students? Yeah. Uh, in the on the website, you you are able you will be able to see um, what we require for uh, you as student. I mean, for the courses are the same. For example, if you are applying for uh, a BBA program, the mathematics uh, uh, grade twelve mathematics is mandatory. So for the courses are almost the same. Um, the GPA might be uh, might be different based on what type of uh, what type of course what type of curriculum you are taking. Um, so uh, here's another uh, students asking for study the in uh, study in uh, English since I was you know sorry, the grade twelve transform to non English speaking. Uh, so for your case, you may be uh, required for a uh, language proficiency if your uh, English if your uh, if your high school uh, instruction like for uh, grade eleven and twelve uh, is not uh, in English. So uh, I would suggest you just apply, just submit the application, and if our admission officer uh, consider that you are not eligible for English proficiency exam. Exemption, then uh, you will be uh, you will will be notified to provide the English uh, the the English testing score such as ours. Yeah, if a student is not meeting the um, grades for um, yeah, this is what I said. Uh, so if you are not uh, if you if you don't meet our um, uh, like GPA score, so uh, actually you can come to our uh, WLIC. So I just share you the link of our um, of our international college. So this program actually is uh, what we uh, is what we uh, uh, we are cooperating with Navitas uh, group, and uh, which is pretty much like the uh, year one. So you can check uh, the information on that website. Mm, uh, if I want to apply to exchange program, how does it work uh, if I am in the co-op program? So I think the program exchange, uh, the exchange program is mainly for the academic courses exchange. It's usually not for the co-op exchange. So all your co-op probably uh, you need to do will be within Canada and uh, for the exchange program and uh, it's it, like probably you can exchange, uh, usually start from uh, start from uh, the second semester. Um, so you can check with the international center if your program is available uh, for any ex exchange or like uh, studying which semester that you can do the exchange and where you can you can go for to, uh, to do the exchange term. Um, so you can just visit the uh, International Center for all the information. Yeah, 
Okay, now let's answer the questions in the chat box. Uh, I think as I remember, there's one student asking for the double degree, uh, uh, double degree. So uh, it's like the students, it's like you applied the double degree through University of Waterloo, uh, which, is, which is sure that you can go for Waterloo for the double degree. Uh, but also we offer the same double degree uh, with Waterloo as well. So if you apply through or a laureate, I mean, the, the, re the result, and uh, if you apply uh, Waterloo or uh, if you apply so uh, uh, laureate will be the same, but because automatically you will get, uh, automatically you will get two degrees from both university. Uh, but the thing is, if you registered as a laureate students, like many laureate students, you will receive all the student services that provided by laureate. Uh, please notice that we are a little smaller than Waterloo. So our student and the faculty ratio is lower than Waterloo. So at Laurier, so I believe like in the smaller environment, you will get more uh, personalized uh, support and personalized student service from us. Yeah. Uh, so let me check out if I've missed any, uh, any questions. There are like lots of questions. Yeah. Um, Uh, so yeah, here's one student that who have submitted the OUC application. Uh, yes, I think five days is uh, quite it's quite short. And because it takes time for the OUAC to transfer the application to us, and also it takes some time for our system to uh, update the uh, to update the application. So I would suggest you just to wait, and uh, you will receive our portal like application portal uh, information, and then uh, you just click portal and to check if your application is completed or, and uh, if there's any update for your application. So you just uh, need to wait for uh, for us yeah uh yes this this student is asking for uh the scholarship for master program uh, because actually our team only handles the uh undergraduate uh programs admission and uh, and the promotion. So uh, for all master degree and the PhD degree, I would suggest you to uh, contact the graduate schools because we are uh, we are working like independently and uh, they handle and they are handling uh, all the uh, graduate programs. So um, I'm so sorry that I can't answer. I can't give you a, a good answer for uh, any of the master uh, degree programs and uh, and for PhDs, yeah, it's better for you to contact the uh, uh, graduate school. So is there any other questions? Yeah, how can you submit the IELTS score? Uh, I think you you are able to uh, like send the IELTS score through the testing center. So once you log into your IELTS uh, account, and uh, you will see like oh sending the sending the test score to uh, to a institution. So you just follow the steps to send out um, the uh, IELTS score to us. I'm just to, uh, so I'm still uh, seeing some of the questions. Yeah, I think for the exchange program, you can see some, but not all. And uh, so, uh, Yelene, would you mind to share the exchange program uh, information web page to the uh, chat box? Yeah. Um, I think Leona is asking for that. Oh, if you, you may have, you may have sent. <laughs> I think I have sent, yeah. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. I can talk about more. Um, I think someone is asking more information for BBA program, so I okay. can, uh, yeah. from okay. high school, um, BBA is a direct entry. So the uh, average uh, Lydia has mentioned is uh, like around uh, 90 
two. I think in my year, it, the average is 92. And you don't have to apply anything after you come to university except co-op. Um, our business school really focuses on casework and group work. Um, the professor will put into um, a team with your classmates. In the first year, we have a really big project called New Venture Project. That is your you and your team members will work together to make your own business and use what we learn to analyze your business throughout the year. So not only one semester, you will have to work with them for two uh, semesters. And then in the second year, we have IKEA sustainability competition. Uh, that is not mandatory, but you can uh, decide to go or not. And then in the third year, we have a pretty cool week called ICE. That is a week that all business classes are canceled. And then just for the purpose of allowing students to do only case competition through using all we learn from school from year one to year three. And then finally we write down a report and then do presentations. Then uh, students can choose the concentration when they are in the fourth of their BBA program. Um, except accounting, because accounting you should take, uh, if you want to go CPA path, then you will have to take a lot of classes. Then you have to start taking those from the third year. I think that's, yeah, that's BBA program. Yeah, uh, I also uh, say that one student is asking for uh, the exchange program and uh, and that student you, uh, are, uh, is concerned about your acceptance letter. So I just uh, sent you an uh, international, uh, like uh, the, the contact information uh, that you can uh, email them to, um, to have a follow-up, to have an update uh, for your acceptance letter. So you just email them. I'm pretty sure that they uh, will get you back. Yeah, uh, so let me check if there's any other questions. Um, so you are welcome to uh, to type your question. I think I almost answer uh, the all the questions. Oh, I think I also missed one question. Yeah, uh, that's why. Yeah, this person also asked for mention about BBA pro a uh, call. So. Uh, for VBA co-op, um, students should apply the co-op in the end of their first year, and then they'll look at your um, GPA based on your GPA in the first year university. And then um, after you have the GPA that um, is, after you uh, satisfy the G, uh, GPA requirement, then they will give you an interview at the beginning of the second year. And then uh, after you get into um the interview and then the result will send to you at the end of the month so if you do your um interview at the beginning of september for example and then you will get the result on october uh, 2nd i remember and then i believe the average gpa for inter the cop for bba program is 10.2 Okay, thank you. So I'm just watching uh, if there's any uh, questions that I've missed. Yeah, let me check that out. And uh, yeah, I think for, I think we have answered almost all the questions. Oh, I think there is one question asking if uh, if you are coming to Canada as an uh, as a student, as an international student, or if, if your if your spouse uh, is eligible to study in Canada. Yes, which is for sure. You you both of you can apply for uh, the study permit. Um, if you are a PR and or Canadian citizen and uh, uh, your spouse is coming to Canada to study and uh, you, you can contact the school to adjust your uh, tuition fee as the domestic student's tuition fee. So this is actually the, like the uh, school policy almost for all the schools because your spouse, even if they are in the international status, are still eligible for the domestic student, uh, domestic student tuition fees. I think these are almost all our uh, questions. Yeah, does the computer science have co-op? Yes, for sure. Our computer program ha uh, has co-op and also our data science have co-op. 
And uh, I think almost most of the uh, science program um, that have co-op available. Yeah, you can check on the website for the co-op opportunity. Yeah, does the volunteer hours affect the percentage of you? Um, uh, yes, we will consider. Uh, I think we have like a ABS form. I, I forgot the full name, but you, once you up, uh, once you submit your uh, application, and then you will receive a portal, and there will be like a form called ABS, uh, where you can submit. You can fill all your volunteer uh, experience and your uh, extracurriculum experience, and uh, as part of the application, and we will uh, we will. Uh, uh, for sure, we will consider all this um, all this information as part of our uh, admission decision. Yeah, but the GPA uh, requirements is like uh, the most uh, crucial thing, the, the most important factor that we consider. Yeah, I, th I think uh, probably I may uh, invite uh, Renisa to share that because I've heard if if students, once they are in Laurie and if they are participating in some school event or in some uh, school uh, on campus job opportunity, so that will affect uh, their Laurie's GPA, right? Um, I, I, I just heard that uh, you, you, at the students, you will get some bonus score for that experience. Is that correct? Yes, in a way you do. <laughs> uh, when, uh, when you join a club's Ath Laurier, you can put it in your Laurier experience record. And that actually opens up opportunities for you to be eligible for scholarships. So some of the scholarships I got was because of my on-campus ca uh, participation. So if, once you're on campus and you're getting into clubs, definitely update your experience record so the university can see that you're an active member and you might get a option to apply for a scholarship and eventually get it. So that's, a, that's how it would boost your GPA, I guess. Like, yeah, that sounds great. So I kept seeing that there are some students asking for their application status. So you are welcome to email and international at uh, wlu.ca uh, with your student's name and your application uh, number in that email and uh, you may check out over there. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. So is there any other questions? Oh yeah, I just see one student asking, can you transfer from a different college, uh, like a college uh, similar to WIC? Uh, I think like you you can, you can, if you are, uh, like if you are uh, studying in Canada in the in a college, if either it's a or it's, it's either a uh, public or a, a private, um, so it, uh, it, as long as it is uh, the post uh, undergraduate level, so you can apply for Laurie as a uh, transfer student. So we will uh, evaluate all your courses and the GPAs and your uh, course dis descriptions to decide if you can transfer some credits to us. So it all depends. Yeah, if you transfer from a uh, like 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 Renisa from a uh, film program to our film program, and she got some uh, like uh, she got some uh, credits transferred to the Laurier program. But if you are transferred from a accounting program to a film program, I'm afraid there might not be uh, many credits that you can bring to Laurier. Yeah, because it all depends on the uh, the program. Uh, if the program are like uh, really relevant to each other. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's, we are almost done. So thank you so much for all your participation. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed the time uh, with us at the open house and all of our open house sessions are recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So you are welcome to watch the reply of any session uh, in, our, uh, in our YouTube channel. Um, so if there's no more questions and then yeah, we will, yeah, we will end our open house session. And uh, thank you again. And wish everyone have a good day and or good evening for some students and uh, a really great weekend.
And uh, yeah, we all hope that to meet you in person uh, on campus in yeah for the next fall or or May intake or anytime. Yeah. And Renisa and Yilin, would you like say would you like to say goodbye to all the audience? Yeah. Um, thank you guys for coming this session. And I would like to say one more thing um, about why I choose Laurie. So uh, when I can, uh, I came to visit many university before I apply to them, um, I really love atmosphere that already gives me. Um, so next year we're going to take class in, in person. So if you have time to come to visit our, on campus, you should come and then I feel like people in here are really caring and willing to help. After I came to Laurie as an international ambassador, uh, international student, I also got a lot of support from them. And that's why today I'm here to um, help you guys regarding your questions. And then uh, I'm very touched because Laurie really provides many opportunities for international students. Uh, I just wanna say, whenever you come from, you will always feel at home at Laurie. Thank you. Uh, just thank you for attending a, a session. And uh, again, just like Elaine said, Laurier is a welcome ground. Everyone's super friendly. And it is the reason why I also chose. I felt completely at home. And I hope to see every one of you guys on campus if you choose to come to Laurier. And really, thank you for coming. Okay, thank you so much. So, and uh, thank you everyone again. And uh, then, yeah, wish you have a really uh, great day and uh, a great weekend. Okay, bye.